let's talk about charge and Coulomb's law. Charge is a property that some objects have. It's a little difficult to nail down, but we'll describe it. So charge, this property that some objects have, it can be either positive or negative. And we know that opposite charges will attract each other. And we know that like charges will repel each other. Okay. We also know that charge is conserved. So what I mean by that is that charge can't be created or destroyed. In that way, it's like mass and energy, two other things that are conserved. And if we have a closed system, the amount of charge within that system will remain constant. Charge is measured in units of coulombs. And if you have one coulomb of charge, that's an awful lot of charge. Most objects in everyday life that we encounter with charge have amounts of charge that are in millicoulombs or microcoulombs or nanocoulombs. So charge that we deal with in everyday life is usually in very small numbers of coulombs. One other strange thing about charge is that it's quantized. And what I mean by that is that it always comes in multiples of the fundamental charge, E. The fundamental charge, E, is equal to 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So every charge that exists out in nature, uh, and in the laboratory really, will come in lumps of this fundamental charge. It'll come in multiples of this fundamental charge. You will never find half of that fundamental charge on an object. You will never find two-thirds of the fundamental charge on an object, or 1.2 of the fundamental charge in object, in a, on an object. You will only find the fundamental charge, twice the fundamental charge, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, ten times, and so on. So nothing can carry less than the fundamental charge, and nothing can carry a fraction of the fundamental charge. The electron, which is the smallest object that carries a negative charge, that electron, every electron, will carry negative 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And a proton will carry positive 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay. Another thing about charges is that the closer two charges are brought together, the greater the force between them. And so if it's an attractive force, it'll be a larger attractive force if they're brought closer. And if it's a repulsive force, it'll be a larger repulsive force if you bring them closer together. Also, if you have two charges, if one of the charges is made to have more charge, if you increase the amount of charge on one of them, that'll increase the amount of force that both of them feel. All right. So with those two ideas in mind, I'm going to write down Coulomb's Law. And that takes those two ideas that I just mentioned and puts them into a mathematical format. So if you look at this equation, this Coulomb's Law, which is also called the electrostatic force, um, that should look familiar. It looks a little bit like Newton's universal law of gravitation. At least it's the same format. We have a different constant. We don't have masses. But there's that r squared in the denominator. So it's a little similar to Newton's universal law. But let's go back. The constant, k, that is called the Coulomb constant. Uh, the two q's in the equation, one is the charge that is feeling the force, and one is the for charge that's causing the force. r is the distance between the two charges, and f is the force on one of the charges. Now, this equation assumes something that's pretty important. It assumes that the charges are points, not spheres or not cube. Um, and usually that's fine in like to make it, it's not a big deal. Uh, the Coulomb constant K is 10 squared per Coulomb squared. Okay, don't get too comfortable with it. It's pretty common in introductory physics classes to use K, but a professional, um, after a certain point, you, you don't use K. K is equal to, for reasons that we're not going to worry about, epsilon naught is a more fundamental constant. Um, so we can rewrite Coulomb's law with that fundamental constant as the force is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q1, Q2 over R squared. Okay. Epsilon naught, that constant, is called the permittivity of free space. 
Uh, we're not going to worry too much about the meaning of that. But epsilon naught is an important constant uh, in the larger physics world, and it's equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton per square meter. It's a mouthful. Um, so, in this class, we will tend to use K, but just keep in mind, epsilon naught is a more fundamental and more common physics constant uh, out in the world. Now, with Coulomb's law, if you get a negative value of the force, let's think about what that means. If you have a negative value of the force, the only way you could get that is if you have two charges with opposite signs. One has to be positive and one has to be negative. That's the only way you could get a negative value of the force. So, if you use Coulomb's law and you get a negative value of the force, that means you have opposite charges and they're attracting each other. So a negative value from Coulomb's law means that you have an attractive force. If you have a positive value from Coulomb's law, that means you either have two positive charges or two negative charges. And either way, it's a repulsive force. So a positive value of force from Coulomb's law means you have a repulsive force.